the base level idea and narrative implementation of a character like the Changeling is a really interesting one, right? A shapeshifter who can take the form of any sentient person or inanimate object in the universe to conceal themselves, to plant and sow the seeds of discord and mistrust, to tear apart an empire from within, or simply do a little bit of trolling. It's kind of secret weapon any government or kingdom in human history would straight up kill to control, but there's no controlling chaos, and the Changeling does what he wants when he wants. Whether that be destabilizing continents or playing pranks for TikTok clout. He has a couple major issues though, both in campaign and in battle, and today we're gonna focus on the battle side, because I really think this character is lacking and frankly uninteresting in its current form when it comes to battlefield mechanics, at least compared to what could have been, and it's something I echoed before I ever got a chance to play with him. Right now, the meta play for the Changeling is to strip him down to his lowest price point, which I believe is 3,500 gold. Hefty price for sure, but one that can certainly be worth it in the right situation. I mean, he's got the entire cast of legendary lords and heroes to choose from, their built-in abilities, and stats replicated to a T. In theory, there should be a major surprise factor when that chosen form is revealed, because you can't mouse over the character and see what your opponent has chosen. So when he turns into Scarbrand, when he turns into Malekith, that should be this crazy moment that you're like, oh crap, I have to change my entire battlefield strategy. But in practice, the reality is that you almost always know what they will choose beforehand, even before the battle starts. Kugath Plaguefather, Bellicor the Dark Master, Scarbrand, maybe Kolek, these are the types of lords you are always going to see because you can't field mounts and you can't field items, which immediately, right off the bat, eliminates 95% of the cast from contention. Why would I pick some crappy on-foot mage with terrible combat stats and no items, who at best represents 1600 gold worth of value when I can field a terror-causing mobile monster who can fly around the battlefield, winning any 1v1 duel while still exploding hordes of infantry with a deluge from the warp. It's way easier to get your 3500 value back with a 3500 gold character than it is a 1200 gold character. Foot Belagar Iron Hammer is never gonna be worth it for you to choose. Why would I pay 3,500 gold for Foot Tretch Craven Tail when I could pay that exact same price of 3,500 for Kugath Plaguefather, who can solo armies with his Mortis Drain, heal my entire blob in one cast, and generate 10,000 value in a five minute battle? You're basically forced into picking the strongest, most expensive entities possible simply because you've already invested 3,500 gold, more than Malekith and Seraphon together, to get them on the field. And the infrastructure that's been built there, the current design, doesn't allow for the necessary permutations required to make that choice interesting. There's not really a choice here when you pick, just the illusion of choice, and I have some suggestions to help remedy that problem, even if I'm not sure they're actually gonna happen. Number one, the simplest and easiest change to make is that the price should not be the same for all characters. If I pick the Ever Queen on foot as my chosen form, there is no way in hell that should be the same cost as picking a greater demon of chaos. Absolutely nothing. From her spell selection to her combat stats, none of it is even remotely approaching that level of worth in terms of investment. Number two, strictly from a gameplay perspective, I would argue that the Changeling should be able to utilize mounts and items for his chosen form as well. Immediately, that would open up the entire cast again, because I'd have a reason to pit Carl Franz riding Deathclaw and wielding the Skull Splitter. Agreed, I understand it makes less sense narratively, the Changeling does not have access to Galvaraz or the power within that Warhammer. It is a unique arcane item. I fully agree he has not stolen the Star of Avalorn from Malarial in the lore, but I'd argue this is where the role-playing narrative structure and campaign actions should come into play. That you conquered these people during the course of your campaign, you stole their goods, and that's why it all translates to the battlefield as well. Or you can just hand wave it with powerful Zinch magic, fit only for the Herald of the Changer himself, if you see fit. Having these options to mount up and use unique items would hugely improve the Changeling's gameplay and give you many more reasons to experiment and try out different forms rather than use two or three throughout the entire course of your campaign or always pick the same character in battle. But the biggest, most impactful change that they could make that would really make him feel like a $25 Lord would be the ability to take multiple forms into battle at once and be able to shift into them at will, to have some real reasons to shift back into his base form too, so that I might spend two minutes taking out a monster as Scarbrand, 
but then I'd want to transform into Halibron on her cauldron to run over some infantry, then fly away as Gelt on a Pegasus, ending that whole sequence as the Changeling to call down a Zinchi Firestorm. I am at least somewhat aware of the difficulties of implementing a feature set that robust. Really, I do get it. Obviously, the pricing of this character becomes much more challenging to implement when you're talking three or five different bodies you can shift to in the course of one battle, and balancing certainly becomes even more of a nightmare. But in my perfect dream world, you'd be able to pick a handful of different characters, not just one, and have the choice to shift into any of them in the heat of battle based on how combat is developing. Because as this battle between Bretonia and Zinch aptly demonstrates, which I'm about to start getting into commentary on, the current design just isn't that interesting or fun. I'm not really playing the Changeling when I feel the Changeling for Zinch. I'm paying to play a much better character on a roster that wasn't built for them. Kugath, a Nurgle Greater Demon, a great unclean one with elite Zinch Halberd blobs against Bretonia, is just insane. It's the only lord I'd really ever want to pick for them. In 95% of the cast, I have zero reason to pick right now, because I'm actively and massively handicapping myself when they don't have items or mounts. At the very least, if you could take multiple forms in the battle, you maybe have a reason to pick a Lariel just to cast a Tempest or something before shifting back into something more useful. But if that's the one and only form you can pick, it will never be picked, ever. And that's a shame. Now you might be wondering, why would Kugath and a Zinch Halberd Blob be good against Bretonia? Well, if you've been following game balance or understand how these characters work, well, it's really goddamn strong, <laughs> right? Okay, so the Severed Claw are a very powerful elite ROR for Zinch that have magical attacks and halberds. They have huge HP pool per model. They have great bonus versus large. They're really hard to shoot. They've got that barrier over shield really hard to kill. Combine that with Chosen of Zinch Halberds, who have some of those same benefits. Ton of infantry mass, ton of holding power, armor piercing, lots of bonus versus large. It's an extremely difficult nut for Bretonia to crack. That was before the Changeling showed up and started turning into Kugath Plaguefather. So Kugath kind of fills out everything that you're missing with the Zinch. Gives you massive AoE burst healing for a Halberd Blob. They defend Kugath perfectly because if Grail Knights or Royal Hippogriff Knights or Pegasus Knights dive in to try to kill him, one, he can defend himself very well, Plague Father's Oration, Melee Defense, all that is very good. But if he gets low, he's going to drop a huge AoE heal, Fleshy Abundance, and heal up his Halberds at the exact same time. The only way to kill him is to invest in five or six Peasant Archers, and that is absolutely an effective way to potentially bring him down but it's a ticking time bomb, and it's not like Zinch doesn't have options for getting into your back line. Furies, Screamers, and now with Kugath, you can drop Stream of Corruption from pretty far away and delete those archers as well. So if the archers die, if they are swarmed and taken out, well, Bretonia is going to have a really difficult time beating this kind of build. Does that inherently matter? No, of course there are matchups that are always going to be difficult for one faction or another. Bretonia just had their time in the sun for four months. They were able to run through literally any infantry whatsoever with their Grail Knights, their Grail Guardians. That got changed, that got reined in a little bit. I don't know where they are in the meta right now. I would imagine they're still in a fine position. Bretonia was not a horrendous faction even before the buff to Grail Knights and Grail Guardians. But of course they have some issues and that's what's going to happen in a game with so much asymmetrical balance. Some factions are simply going to have a large advantage over others. That's okay. My point here is there's not a lot of player agency when it comes to choosing your lord or special form as the changeling right now. It's not a very interactive mechanic. It is not very interesting at all. And if there's... what, How many characters do we think people will realistically want to turn into if you don't have access to mounts and items? There's probably five or six in the entire game that are worth that kind of price point, right? And it's not even just from price point. Like in campaign, the price doesn't matter. It's just about efficacy. And there's something efficacious about Tretch Craven Tail on foot, or Alarial on foot, or Lokir Felhart on foot. There are extremely neat situations where you might want a character who's on foot with a ton of regen, but you can't even choose someone like Malice or Lokir Felhart because the Kraken Helm and the Warp Sword of Cain. Both of those are items. 
So the changeling can't use those things anyway. So again, you're never gonna pick those characters. I don't actually know how the changeling transforms into malice if he can turn into Zarkin afterwards. But I think a big change coming from game two to game three was that his warp sword of Cain actually does give Zarkan regen once you transform. And if you don't have that regen, the Zarkan form becomes a lot less impactful because you don't have all that burst healing when you're in demonic form. So even if he could transform into Zarkan, I'm not really sure you'd want to. Just another character that you're never going to want to play as when you're the changeling. So it's just a weird design to me. I feel like there's a lot more that CA could have done with them to make it more interesting. And at least some of those changes would not be very difficult to implement. So what we saw in this battle was the, the Kugath effect. The power that a 3,500 gold single entity can bring to the battlefield. The Mortis Strain effect. Any infantry that got close melted away under that corruption. When they blobbed up, they got exploded because he has access to his full lore of magic. Blightboil just straight up deleted an entire section of the peasant army and now, without the bodies to surround Kugath, sending the Royal Pegasus Knights or anything else, they don't have the chaff required to tie down the Halberds and that means your big single entities, your big monsters, your important cavalry are gonna be side down by fleshy abundance healed Zinch Chosen and the Knights of the Severed Claw. So this is the kind of cohesive, well thought out strategy that's gonna be really fun the first three or four times you do it. And then you're gonna be like, well, I'm not playing the Changeling anymore. I'm playing Kugath Plaguefather on the Zinch roster. And I just think there's a hell of a lot more they could do with that. And that's why, if it's possible at some point to be able to shift into multiple forms and also get those mounts and items then you're going to see the changeling really become that beautiful butterfly he's supposed to be where he's not just sitting in kugath form he might spend a little bit of time in there but then also get to utilize some other characters some other abilities some other awesome mounts and maneuverability types of things that open up the battlefield and open up the kind of strategies you're going to see because i guarantee you only a couple days in people have already found those perfect strats and that's what they're going to use every time and yeah, players are always going to optimize the fun out of games. That's always been a thing, especially in strategy games. But there are ways that design can help mitigate that issue. And there are ways that design can help push players towards making interesting decisions and incorporating different kinds of strategies. And the way it is now, it, it, just, it just doesn't work for me. I don't think he's very fun or interactive on the battle side of Total War. And battles are a really important part of Total War.